University of Missouri-St. Louis College of Education podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is David Stouffer and I get to be the recruitment coordinator for the UMSL College of Education. Each week on this podcast, we will meet an innovator in the field of education. We will spend some time getting to know them and learning about their work and how it can help you and yours. It is my sincere hope that this podcast will be a source of encouragement and support as you work to continue impacting lives as an educator. My guest today is Shannon Quinn. Shannon is the student care and advocacy case manager for UMSL, and she also oversees the UMSL pantry. She'd been working with the Triton Pantry since she was a student at UMSL after graduating and made it her career path. Uh, Shannon, welcome to Triton Talk. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm really excited to have you here. I was interested in learning more about the UMSL uh, Triton Pantry, but come to find out that... uh, You do a lot here at UMSL besides just that. So why don't we start off and just get to know you a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you wound up at UMSL, what you studied when you were here, and then how you wound up making it a career and taking over the UMSL pantry uh, responsibilities. Sure. Um, Again, thank you for having me. Um, I started my college and then career path at um, St. Charles Community College. I was just taking some classes fresh out of high school, not totally sure what I wanted to do, but no, I wanted to go down the path of helping people in some way. Um, So I started taking some of their human service classes um, and then found, um, you know, the the career of social work and the broad spectrum of all the things that you can do with that degree and in that career. Um, and so that was how I found UMSOL. They had a great uh, transfer rep at St. Charles Community College. Um, my mom was also working here at that time, so it was a really smooth transition to come to UMSOL. Um, they had a great social work program that I was really interested in. Um, I started that in January of 2020, and we all know what happened shortly after that. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, so I had you know, the whole COVID experience here at UMSOL transitioning to online, um, which I was kind of sad about because at the time I was you know, brand new here. I was starting to make friends and having a really good time. Um, but you know the transition to online was pretty smooth given you know the situation of the world Um, so you know got through all of that at UMSL um, and was making it through the social work program and really just knew that I found my place and where I wanted to the career that I wanted to take and to be in Um, I after a little bit of time studying here at UMSL I uh, I think I got an email that the Triton Pantry was hiring student workers and ah. I was very intrigued. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've been wanting to kind of step into a role like that, um, you know, since coming out of high school, but wasn't really sure how. Things were really limited coming out of COVID. So I took that opportunity. I started working as a student worker in the pantry in 20, November of 2020. Um, and then worked there for a little while. And soon in my social work program, I needed to start a practicum internship. And I was struggling to find an agency to do that at. And one day, my supervisor, Robin Kimberlin, our director in student advocacy and care, came by the pantry, just like a normal visit coming to stop by. And I kind of was venting about some of my struggles finding a practicum position. She had also been through that program and knows what it's like. Um, And, you know, offered me a position in her office in student advocacy and care, um, which I gladly accepted. And I learned so much in that practicum position. Um, And then once I graduated in May of 2022, was hired on as a case manager on the team and then began to oversee the Triton Pantry, which was a very full circle experience for me starting as a student worker and then growing into that leadership role was very, very full circle. So social work as a bachelor's degree, you started working at the pantry as a student. You did your internship there as a student and now you're overseeing and basically managing the Triton Pantry. Yep. Um, did you start doing that right after you finished your degree and just move right from your internship into a full-time position? I did, yes. It was a very smooth transition. There was a, um, a, posi- a case manager position being opened in the student mm-hmm. advocacy and care office right around the time that I was graduating. And so I applied and got it. So you do more than just oversee the pantry. What else, what other responsibilities do you have here? Yeah, at the other half of my job is being a case manager in student advocacy and care where we help students with pretty much anything 
anything that would impact them as they go to college and as it relates to them being a successful college student, whether that's financial, helping them connect with mental health resources, um, and just a, a wide array of things that we can assist with. That's fantastic. Did you ever think of yourself in this kind of a career path when you were trying to figure out what you were going to do when you grow up? As far as being in higher ed, I did not, I knew I wanted to help people, um, but I learned along the way that you can do that in higher education, which is a very comfortable setting for me. I'm 25. I've been a student up until I graduated in 2022. I was a student my whole life. So mm -hmm. the student space is a space I'm always very comfortable in. So when I learned that I could do this type of work in a college setting, um, which also just helps make the college experience more accessible to people who you know are lower economic status and people who college might not be their first option, and then being able to be in a helping role where we have resources and ways to assist people to make college more feasible for them. We do that uh, very, very well here at Elmsville, don't we? Support our students and find so. creative ways to help them become successful. Absolutely. Not just an academic institution, but very supportive and, and a lot of amazing things right. that we do. Uh, and you're very good evidence of that. So thank, thank you for you. the work you're doing. That's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so let's let's dig into the pantry a little bit. What's the mission of the Umsel Triton Pantry? Yeah, the Umsel Triton Pantry is there to serve any student facing food insecurity or hunger, whether that's a one-time thing during their semester if something happens or an ongoing thing if they're visiting us throughout their semester. Um, we are there to help them in any situation that they might find themselves in. Um, usually we encourage students to come by around once a week, but it's needs-based. It's a self-choice model. Students can come in as often as they need and we won't turn them away. Um, the only limits that are associated with the pantry are like certain limits on specific items. Um, like we might only, uh, if we're low on milk, we might only allow one per person or two per person or something like that. Um, but we try to keep it no questions asked. Students can just walk in. We ask that all we ask is that they be a student at UMSL. Um, we'll check their student ID and they can come on in and it's a self-choice model. They can grab whatever they would like. Um, so it's we, really an honor system that mm -hmm. students aren't abusing <laughs> the Triton Pantry when yeah. you know they just want to get something for free. You, you really trust that they're really in need and really need what you have to offer. Yeah, we do have a declaration of need and a waiver of liability just so that students know that you know they agree to um, certain things whenever they use the pantry, but we don't have like a form for them to fill out or anything. They can just walk in as long mm -hmm. as they can show us that they're a student, mm -hmm. they're able to use the pantry. Okay, okay. How often are students coming in and out on a daily basis? I would say during the fall semester, we have been seeing on average about like 30 to 50 students per day. I will say that fluctuates a lot given the time of the semester. The summer semester is obviously a little bit slower. Um, I would say the daily average over the summer was maybe at most like 10 to 15 mm -hmm. a day. Um, so it does fluctuate, but mm -hmm. I, over the academic year, I believe I calculated about 4,000 visits. Wow. So, and about... <laughs> uh, I think it was about 700 individual students. Okay, I was just going to ask that. So, <laughs> wow, over the course of a year, 700 individual students will come in, mm -hmm. obviously multiple times, right? Um, on an as-needed basis. What do you provide? What types of food and, and other uh, products are there for the sure. students to have access to? Yeah, we have a partnership with the St. Louis Area Food Bank, and so we get monthly deliveries from them, and then we can also place pickup orders. Um, we are kind of at the mercy of what the local food banks have to offer. Um, so they have a list of items that we can shop through and we try our best to keep a wide range of non-perishable, shelf-stable, um, but then also like fresh items and hygiene products and household products and also at the same time treats and like a little sweet treat mm -hmm. that someone mm -hmm. might not grab for themselves at the grocery store mm -hmm. because they can't afford it on top right. of the other necessities that they need to be grabbing. Mm -hmm. Um, so we try to keep a good variety, but we are at the mercy of whatever the food banks have. Um, we also have a new partnership with Operation Food Search, um, which has been helpful while they kind of gather the items for us. We don't really, you know, have a say in what we get. We can kind of let them know things that we're needing um, and go from there. But yeah. 
You mentioned the the food pantry. The what was that again? The St. Louis St. Louis area food food bank. bank yep. Mm-hmm. Um, what other organizations help sponsor and support and fund? our Triton food pantry. Yeah, our one of our other partnerships is the St. Louis area diaper bank and they provide us um, through that partnership with diapers and then period supplies. Um, so student parents can come get diapers from the pantry on a monthly basis. They'll sign up on a form. Um, we'll email them whenever they arrive and they can come pick them up and we'll keep track of their sizing mm-hmm. and all of that, connect them with other student parent resources. And then um, period supplies, we just have them out on a table and mm-hmm. all that we ask is students, um, they like to record their zip codes so that the organization, um, the Alliance for Period Supplies just kind of knows like mm-hmm. the areas that they're serving. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so the St. Louis area diaper bank. Um, and then we also just are starting to create some partnerships with um, like other campus departments. Um, I know there's a local church in the area that will donate to us sometimes. And we're always trying to create those types of sure. in reach partnerships. So you're always wanting to expand that, uh, those relationships and, and whatnot. That makes perfect sense. So what, what is the most requested or needed, maybe that's a better word, <laughs> item from the food, from the Triton Pantry? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say as far as food goes, healthy snacks and or um, like ready, already packaged meals that they can just like pop in the microwave Mm -hmm. or quickly eat. Um, Healthy snacks for sure, like protein bars, trail mix. Snacks are kind of those grab and go items that go Mm -hmm. very quickly. Um, And a lot of the times we'll get donated um, like chips and stuff like that, which are always great. It's always great for students to have um, a quick snack, but having those like healthy snacks that are going to kind of like feed their brain while they're here on Mm -hmm. campus trying to study is always what we're um, trying to look for. Um, And then also hygiene items. We don't get those donated too terribly often, Um, like toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant, even just like soap, shampoo and conditioner. Mm -hmm. Um, we would love to see more of those items mm-hmm. in the pantry and also available at the food bank for us to purchase. What about, uh, this just came to mind, um, and you see them all over the place now, are the companies that pro- that create ready-made meals mm-hmm. that all you do is pop in the microwave and eat, and it's not a not a frozen dinner it's actually like you know there's there's um i don't want to use the the real name because then we might have to pay you know royalty fees or anything (laughs) like that but you see them all the time i actually utilize that because i hate to cook Mm -hmm. so i get these meals sent to me i put them in the fridge and whenever i'm ready to eat i have chicken piccata or i have a a nice plant-based uh veggies and rice and beans um, variety of those things. Has that ever come into the possibilities for kids that want to be able to just get a full meal and, and pop it in the microwave and eat it? Absolutely. We love receiving um, donations of things like that because students do, whether they're living in the dorms here on campus and they just have a harder time preparing meals or they're a commuter student and they live far away and they just need something now, um, it's a way to get a very balanced meal. Mm-hmm. Um, without a lot of time and effort and work put into it when they're already like here on campus all day attending sure. class and studying and all of those things. I would think some of those companies would love to be able to say that they contribute to a food bank or to a pantry like Absolutely. that to, you know, if nothing else, just to make them feel better about themselves. But sure. at the same time, they're doing a tremendous service. So mm-hmm. um, tell us about the shelf sponsorship program. Yeah, um, that is a newer program that we started to pilot in uh, the spring 2024 semester. Um, Basically, we are open to any department here on campus sponsoring a shelf in the Triton Pantry. And what that looks like is um, they would either inquire with us somehow, whether they we have a form that they can fill out um, or they they can just reach out and let us know that they're interested. Mm -hmm. Um, We kind of leave it up to the department and kind of, you know, different offices have different size and different amounts of people and all of them so um, whatever they feel is most feasible do you think you guys can gather you know uh, like three different items like peanut butter jelly and bread or do you guys think you can just have like a hygiene drive or something like that so kind of figure out what works for them Um, and then just for an example um, the IT department was the first department to sponsor a shelf so they reached out to us (laughs) <laughs> uh, they did a drive for the whole month prior, and then we set a pickup date with them. And they just had boxes out in their offices that they then collected throughout the whole month. And they, you know, sent out communication to their team that they were doing this drive for the Triton Pantry. Mm-hmm. Um, I then created signage to have up on the shelf in the pantry, so students then knew these items came from the IT department. Oh, neat. Um, and that was our very first one, and it went really well. That was in the spring. 
Um, and then shortly after that, we were reached out to by the HR department in Woods Hall, um, and they wanted to do a whole competition with the whole building of Woods <laughs> Hall to see what department could gather the most. Oh, well, that's great. Um, and now I, I am blanking on who won. Um, <laughs> but they gathered so much, and, you know, we had um, signage up there that said, you know, these items came from all mm-hmm. of the departments in Woods Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a really fun way, like to see other campus departments get excited and just having the community come together. Um, and then seeing the students kind of just being able to see where these items came from. And these are people on campus that are supporting you and thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Um, it was really cool to see. So we're really excited to continue doing that. Um, and just reaching out to different offices Mm -hmm. here on campus or getting reached out to by different offices on campus, um, and coordinating that with them. How does a department at UMSL get to initiate a uh, shelf sponsorship program? Do they contact you directly, or how do yeah, they do that? they can, or the, um, the Triton Pantry email. I already have a few inquiries that I'm going to start mm-hmm. working through, um, and um, either we will reach out to them, or they can reach out to us. Mm-hmm. We do send out a um, semesterly email at the beginning of every semester. Um, and this was the first time I was able to include information on the shelf sponsorship. So we have a couple, um, inquiries. So I would say that's the best way is to reach out. Um, do, does the pantry do any kind of all umsel drives periodically throughout the year where they ask everybody to just donate a specific item or something like that? I would say the closest thing that we do to that is around Giving Tuesday, um, is asking people to donate to the pantry. Um, I don't think we've, I'm not sure the last time we've done like an umsel wide thing. I know that in the past, before my time, there was a, a mobile pantry. Mm. Um, but I know like even just more recently, the Honors College, they're going to be having a trivia night and they were, mm-hmm. um, you know, reaching out to see what items they could ask for, for donations to equal a mulligan oh, yes. um, in their trivia. So <laughs> I get things like that a lot. Um, and like campus departments that reach out to us with their own ideas of how they can help, which is really cool. Awesome. Awesome. Um, how does someone become involved or even maybe volunteer to become part of the Elmsel Triton Pantry? Sure. I would say we don't regularly take volunteers, which is mainly because um, we do hire student workers through the federal work study program, uh, mainly because if we can pay our student workers for the work that they do, we would prefer to. Um, so we do hire student workers through the federal work study program. Um, I have a team of about five right now, um, but we're, you know, students have, you know, different things pop up, whether it's a practicum or they're graduating, um, and, you know, different students kind of coming in and out of that team all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to kind of just watch them all go through their programs. Sure. And other than the, uh, shelf sponsorship program, do you take private donations or individual donations from anyone that just wants to give? Yeah, we get people coming in, I would say a couple times a week with just even like a a grocery bag full of donations. We usually try to take down their information and send out some kind of thank you, like email Hmm. or some kind of thank you note. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What would would you say is the greatest need right now for the Triton Pantry? Good question. Kind of what I was saying earlier, healthy snacks Um, things that students can grab on the go that aren't going to like weigh them down, but give them energy. Um, and then those like ready to go meals. I think those would be, uh, students would be really receptive of those like on the go, um, Mm -hmm. meals that they don't have to put a lot of effort into preparing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also hygiene items because everybody needs to brush their teeth and you know, all of the, all of, (laughs) hopefully, um, and you know, certain hygiene products, um, whether it's like the pink tax or inflation, um, they're just getting more expensive, especially period products. I always tell any student, uh, any student that's menstruating, whether you're experiencing period poverty or not, mm-hmm. come to the Triton Pantry and get a flow kit whenever mm-hmm. you're on your period because these items are getting more and more expensive and inaccessible. Um, so I always tell students to just use hmm. your resources. Wow, that's fantastic. So you've been with the pantry essentially for about four years as a student um, and now as a, as a full-time employee, mm-hmm. one of our staff. Where, where do you see, what's the future of the Triton Pantry? Do you have any plans or any goals or any visions you have for where you'd like to see new yeah. and exciting things for the Triton Pantry? I will say most recently, something that we've kind of seen just come to light was our new um, smaller location over on South Campus. 
Um, we've always, you know, we're always looking to grow the pantry in some way, shape or form. Um, and we were approached by the College of Nursing because they had a space over there in the nursing administration building. Um, so we're kind of piloting a smaller like satellite location over on South Campus just as a way to have something on South Campus. Um, you know, what we love about our pantry on North Campus is it's in the MSC. It's in a very central spot on campus. Um, on North Campus, that is. So being able to have something on, even if it's a little bit more limited and smaller, um, something on South Campus um, is just a way to kind of grow and outstretch a little bit more. Um, I will say we're also trying to implement some like poster education in the pantry, just kind of trying to educate the students and community on like, what is a food pantry? Um, what are the appropriate ways and best practices and ways to use a food pantry? How can I like encourage my friends who are in need to come by and make them feel more comfortable? Um, so just trying to make it a more non-judgmental, you know, there's always stigma with using basic needs resources anywhere you go. So we're always trying to just fight that stigma and make sure that any student feels welcome, is aware of the pantry, knows where it is, what we're about, and how we can help, whether they need to visit or they need to bring their friend by and visit or whatever it may be. Sure, sure. Well, are there opportunities for alumni to participate as well? Um, you, you know, uh, as far as helping support or donate or give. Oh, to the absolutely. Pantry. Yeah, I know that um, we've been working with UMSL Giving and they do a lot of really good outreach trying to get us donations, whether that's from alumni or the community, which we're really, really grateful for because that's, you know, how we mm -hmm. stay open. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You heard that alumni. Let's <laughs> buck up. Let's go. Um, so. What about uh, Shannon Quinn? What does the future hold for Shannon Quinn? Is there a Dr. Quinn in the future? I definitely need to get started on my master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, you know, eyeballing our uh, master's of social work degree here at UMSL. Um, very, um, you know, familiar with the program already and just... Um, I'm glad to have had a little bit of professional experience under my belt now, and I think it's about time to get started <laughs> on that, because um, I would definitely like to just grow in my career. I've um, you know, grown to love higher ed and this setting, um, so just wanting to yeah, take the next step. Great. Well, I hope it's a, a long and, and very uh, profitable career for you and for UMSL here at UMSL. So you do phenomenal work and thank you for that great work. Thank you. Um, anyone that's listening wants more information about the UMSL Triton Pantry, where can they go to find the information? Um, we have a web page on the UMSL website, so that's Triton Pantry at UMSL.edu would be um, a good email to send anything to. Um, or my email is s as in Sam, Q U I N N at umsel.edu. Um, either one is great. We'll take you know any shelf sponsorship inquiries, questions, donations, anything like that. Well, thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much for being on Triton Talk today. This has been great. Um, my guest today has been Shannon Quinn, who does a lot of things here at UMSL, one of which is manages the UMSL Triton Pantry and provides incredible services for our students here at UMSL. Thank you very much for being on Triton Talk. Thank you for having me. I am honored that you chose to join me today for the University of Missouri St. Louis College of Education podcast. I hope you'll join me next time. Till then, I'm David Stouffer. Thank you for the work you do. Never forget, you are making a difference every day. Thank you.